at an old stone house by a river. It can be funny how life really turns out. Instead of having 13 kids, I now take care of over 40 each year at a daycare business I built for myself. So let's just say between my own four children and running a daycare, I knew potty training would be a reoccurring obstacle in my life. Believe me, I know exactly what it's like to be in your shoes. As my firstborn Emily turned one years old, thinking ahead about potty training seemed like it would be an exciting time. In my mind's eye, training my child to use the potty is the first time I truly help them on their way to becoming an individual. To me, it would be a rewarding experience for the both of us. As the time grew nearer and my little 26-month-old Emily started to show interest in that big, white, watery bowl, a wave of nervousness washed over me as the reality set in. I had no clue where to start or what to do. I was nervous that I wouldn't do a good job because, after all, it's not exactly something you can remember going through yourself as a child. Being unable to relate to what my child would be going through made things that much more nerve-wracking. That's when I had to take a step back and say to myself, know that it's not your fault. There are people who teach you how to go through giving birth and people who show you the proper way to hold and burp your child, but no one prepares you for potty training. It's all a bunch of personal opinions and hearsay when all you really want is an exact plan to follow that'll do the trick and do it fast. So when I first sought out information on potty training, I turned to the internet, just as you probably are doing right now. I was bombarded with a million things I should buy to help make potty training easier. From reward charts stickers to special potties that played music when you peed, I was reluctant to spend money on something only to later find out it was just a gimmick. I guess you could say I didn't want my money to be the only thing flushed down the toilet. Like you probably already have, I started to notice pull-up diapers becoming more and more popular with parents, and that's when I started to see a common trend between children in my daycare. The boys and girls who were potty trained the fastest were the ones whose parents never trained them with pull-up up diapers. After months of seeing this occur time and time again, I was convinced pull-up diapers simply don't work. If there's one thing I refused to do when potty training my daughter Emily, it was putting her in pull-up diapers. But I had to ask myself why so many parents are getting aboard the pull-ups bandwagon. Now understand that the diaper business is a multi-billion dollar industry. They know when your child is a baby, every dirty diaper will have to be replaced, and that's another dollar in their pockets. But once your child gets a little older, these companies risk losing your business. So how do they squeeze every Every last cent out of you before you no longer need their product? By creating a diaper you need to buy after diapers, or commonly known as pull-ups. This is all really a ploy for the company to get your business longer. All these companies really care about is how much money they make and sneakily advertise it as some amazing tool for potty training. Without turning this into a boring rant, these diapers will more than triple the amount of time it takes to successfully teach your child how to use the potty. Now with that said, let me give you a word of warning. Not having your child potty train quickly is completely frustrating, and the story I'm about to share with you will reveal reveal just how messy it can be. Anyone who knows me would call me a shopaholic with no hesitation. On weekends, my big adventure of the day would be running out to the mall and window shopping or trying on different outfits. I very seldom bought anything as most of our family's income went towards food and bills, but it's always nice to look. There I was in Saks Fifth Avenue with my little Emily, who was now just 26 months old and in her first week of potty training, when a pair of $348 black silk Prada dress pants leapt off the rack and led me to a change room. Now, I would never spend that on a pair of pants myself, but just had to see how they would look on me. They were a perfect fit, and as I turned my body from left to right, my eyes would stay glued to the mirror, admiring myself in the pants from all sides. You see, what made trying to potty train Emily on my own without a plan so frustrating was that I had no idea how to make her tell me when she needed to go potty. While my eyes were fixed on the mirror, Emily quietly had an accident all over the changing room floor without me even noticing. I unbuttoned the pair of Prada pants, 
and immediately wished life had an undo button as I watched them fall down in the puddle of pee surrounding the change room floor. Needless to say, not knowing exactly how to potty train my child ended up costing me not just $348 on a new pair of pee-soaked pants, but total and utter embarrassment. I will admit, at that point, all I wanted to do was cry. Instead, I used my pain to light a fire within me and decided to find out exactly how to quickly potty train any child so Emily would never have an accident in public again. With my newly found motivation and stumbling upon my discovery between parents who used pull-ups compared to those who didn't, I knew that my daycare created the perfect setting to experiment with what actually works when potty training and what doesn't. What clicked in my mind one day is that for years, potty training had been one big puzzle. You know how the picture will look in the end, a potty trained child, but have such a hard time solving the puzzle because you're not sure what pieces are needed or how they fit together. For the next three months with Emily, I tried every possible tip, trick, and method out there. During this time, I faced countless accidents, and it easily became the most challenging, frustrating, and embarrassing time in my career as a mother. It wasn't until Emily reached 29 months old she became fully potty trained. By that time, I'd filled up an entire old leather notebook, jam-packed with all the notes I had taken during my first attempt ever at potty training. In addition to my own findings, I was receiving input and feedback from nearly all the parents whose children attended my daycare. On paper, it started to become clear to me what methods were effective and worked time and time again for families. Two years and one more child later, all of my findings had been turned into what I believe is the only effective method in existence to quickly potty training any child in as little as three days. It wasn't until I started giving out copies to all the parents whose children attended my daycare, I knew I was on to something big. The next week, parents started approaching me out of the blue, asking, how can I quickly and easily potty train my child? I would kindly give a copy of the guide along with my business card clipped to the top left-hand corner to anyone who asked. I would say over 127 mothers and fathers had come to my daycare that month alone just for a copy of the potty training guide that I'd spent so much time creating.